Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Is, for those of you who don't know, this is uh, our senior senator, Thank Lindsey Graham. Thank you. I get a discount now. <laughs> That's right. Got that at all the local restaurants. So I wanted to bring home to South Carolina and to my governor, who I'm very proud of, why I and Senator Scott voted against the recent Democratic proposal called the Inflation Reduction Act. One reason, Governor, is it won't reduce inflation. <laughs> but this bill, I think, is a nightmare for South Carolina. It's a nightmare for the American economy. And I could spend hours talking to you about it, but I won't. I'm going to talk about a couple provisions that I think are just tone deaf and ill-conceived. Believe it or not, <clears throat> this bill has a new gas tax. So uh, I want to just suggest something, Governor. Go around the state and ask people, would you like a new gas tax? I think they will say no. So what, what does this bill do? It imposes a new gas tax of 16.4 cents per barrel on all imported oil at a time that we're becoming more dependent on imported oil. Remember the president went to Saudi Arabia urging them to produce more. So every barrel coming from overseas has a new tax on it. We're shutting down domestic production, so we're going to increase tax on imported oil as an ill-conceived idea. It also has a 16.4 cents per barrel tax on domestic crude refined in America, which means in American refineries, the costs will go up, will make us less competitive. This starts with pennies, it becomes dimes, and eventually dollars. So I'm adamantly, adamantly opposed to any new gas taxes on the American consumer and the South Carolina uh, driving public. The question is, does it reduce inflation? Penn Wharton Business School said they have low confidence that the legislation will have any impact on inflation. The Congressional Budget Office that was Joe Manchin's Bible in the past said that in 2022, there will be neg negligible uh, reduction in inflation. In 2023, inflation could go up or down by 0.1%. So you got the Penn Wharton University of Pennsylvania budget model, the Congressional Budget Act, and Bernie Sanders, who all say this won't reduce inflation. It won't, but what it will do is drive up the cost of gasoline and the cost of doing business. The 15% minimum tax, Governor, is structured in a way to disincentivize um, purchasing equipment and building new factories. You've done a terrific job of guiding us through COVID. We came out of COVID strong. <clears throat> Our economy is trying to rebound, and this provision in the, this bill would take off the table uh, the ability to claim uh, expensing on your taxes if you buy new equipment. In 2017, we passed a law that allowed business to expense the cost of new purchases of equipment in the same year they're made, incentivizing more equipment and business expansion. This bill eliminates that provision, that's how it raises the money, and it's gonna de-incentivize uh, factory and equipment expansion and equipment purchase at a time we needed to get out of a recession. So that was really a bad idea. The bottom line is that this bill raises taxes and creates new federal government programs at a time that we're in a recession. And the best way to get out of a recession is to limit federal government spending and incentivize growth in the private sector. But the one that really has gotten a lot of attention is that for some reason, somehow, uh, every Democrat in Washington in the United States Senate believes it's a good thing to hire 87,000 new IRS agents to come after you and your taxes. This is supposed to be for the rich. Well, let me tell you, the rich have a bunch of lawyers and accountants. Well over half of all the audits conducted in the United States today are conducted on people who make less than $75,000. I couldn't believe it when I read it. They're talking about expanding the IRS two and a half times. Enough new IRS agents to fill up williams Bryce Stadium and Death Valley. So when you go to the football game this fall, just imagine everybody to your left and right being an IRS agent. Look at how it changes the department. 
78,000 current employees. We're going to add 87,000 new ones in the next 10 years. Wonder what they will be up to. If you think the federal government is out of control now, God help us when you get 87,000 new IRS agents who are looking under every rock and stone to get money out of your pocket. This is bigger than the British Army. So my belief is that we probably need a bigger British Army and a smaller IRS. So what am I going to do? Governor, I'm going to fight this tooth and nail. This plan of, uh, I think it's $60 billion additional funding for IRS is implemented <coughs> over a 10-year period. Every year, I'm going to try to rescind the spending for the IRS and send it to the border where we actually need Border Patrol agents. We have 18,000 Border Patrol agents. I'd like to see a lot more Border Patrol agents and less IRS agents. So from my point of view, this would harm South Carolina's economy. It would deepen the recession. It is a power grab in the name of climate change. It is a tax and spend bill at a time we can least afford it. And every Republican, from Susan Collins to Ted Cruz to Lindsey Graham, voted no. And the reason we voted no is that we understood in March of 2021 when they did the American Rescue Plan, it would not work. So I'll close with this. The same people who are telling you this will lower inf inflation are the same people in March of 2021 passed a $1.9 trillion bill along party lines that has wrecked our economy. In March of 2021, Governor, inflation was 2.6% in this country. It is now 9.1%. And the reason, the massive spending and taxes in the American Rescue Plan led us to where we are today, and this new bill will make everything worse. So I am hoping that some House Democrats who are facing the public in November will get a little bit of common sense and not walk off the cliff because Nancy Pelosi told you to. Every Democrat in the Senate followed Schumer's lead. I am urging House Democrats to stop the madness before it's too late. You really don't want to vote for 87,000 new IRS agents uh, if you're in a swing district. You really don't want to vote for new gas taxes when gas prices are through the roof. So every problem we have today, Governor, will be made worse if this bill becomes law. And I just want to let you know, from my point of view, that everything you've done to keep the economy moving in the right direction is at risk by this bill. And I appreciate your leadership. And uh, let me know what I can do to help you and help South Carolina. And I think the first thing I can do to help you in our state is to vote no to this bill, which I did. Thank you, Senator Graham. And you're exactly right. We appreciate you fighting this, <clears throat> as you always have, on uh, misdirected, ill-conceived legislation and acts, executive and as well as leg legislative, and also appreciate Tim Scott's work as well. But everything Senator Graham said is right. Uh, we, we have been battling the Biden administration and uh, with success during the pandemic. As you know, uh, we did not close down like they did in other states. We used common sense. We followed the Constitution, which says if you take somebody's property, you have to compensate them for it. And to shut down a business without just cause it could be proven in court uh, is, a, is a taking. So we didn't do it. Now, we followed common sense as a result. South Carolina today is thriving while other states that took the, the wrong road that followed the lead of President Biden and others are, are suffering dramatically. But we were, we were successful in court. Uh, we were successful in battling the executive orders that were requiring vaccinations that people didn't want. And there's no justification, no authority in the Constitution for the President of the United States to tell a citizen they have to get a vaccination whether it's good for them or not. It doesn't make any difference. But we fought all those things. We fought school closures. We supported our businesses. And South Carolina had a good, has had a remarkable two years, although other parts of the country are suffering. But now comes this. And not only are we fighting executive orders, but now it's turned to legislation in the Congress. And this is a, this is a tough battle. 
Uh, this is not something that will typically be fought in the courts. This is going to have to be fought right now in the House. And that's why we are here today to rally support, to rally understanding of the danger that this legislation poses to the entire country. Uh, we right now have a $30.59 trillion national debt. What is that? That means every year when the federal government borrows more money than it brings in, it creates a deficit. And you add up those deficits over the years and you get the national debt. The national debt now is $30.59 trillion. I don't think we can even think that big. This is, this is going to add to it. Now, the administration is saying, and the Democrats in the Senate are saying, well, it's going to be paid for, it's going to cut inflation and all that. That is the same rhetoric that we've been hearing for year after year from the people on the left, and what has it gotten us? It has gotten us a $30.59 trillion national debt, which means it is not paid for. It does not cut inflation. It does not create business. It does not spur the economy. It does exactly the opposite, and that's your proof. But just in South Carolina, we're booming. Uh, state government is in the best fiscal shape ever. I wish we could say this about the national government, Senator. We have the largest budget surplus a $2 billion surplus on what is ordinarily an eight or $9 billion state budget. We have a $2 billion surplus. Our businesses did so well. Uh, the largest rainy day reserve, the lowest debt ever in the history of the state. That's because we're doing it right. More South Carolinians are working than ever before. More are coming, more jobs are coming. We never closed during COVID. We used our heads. We kept that we fought to keep the classrooms open and we are cutting taxes. We have cut income taxes on everyone. We have eliminated income taxes on uh, military retirement pay. And we want to eliminate it on law officers as well. Uh, we're giving a billion dollars back to the taxpayers. We're funding the police. We're raising their pay, providing them with more resources. We've outlawed sanctuary cities. We sent the National Guard troops to the southern border. I wish, wish the Biden administration would hire that many people and send them to the southern border. Uh, we put re school resource officers, armed officers in every school, reforming how the state's public education is funded, and we have, uh, we're giving millions of dollars for scholarships for our people for the technical colleges. That is the way to do it, cutting taxes, supporting business, and what this bill does is just the opposite. And Senator, we, again, we, we were able to withstand the executive orders and uh, those misconceived actions by the Biden administration. But now this is, this will be federal law. This, this is dangerous, it's dangerous. There's never a good time to raise taxes, raising taxes, we, we are taxed enough. We are taxed enough. What we need to do is spend the money on the right things. This is going in the wrong direction and I just, I, I've tried to understand the way the people on the, the, the left think. Uh, I just don't understand it. It flies in the face of common sense. And if we are not able to convince others around the country, those in the Congress, uh, as well as in our governors, uh, 20, I think 22 of us have written a letter to the president on this. Uh, Senator uh, Brian Kemp, Governor Kemp of Georgia and I, headed that effort up and there'll be more. We're doing everything we can as governors and as people in our states, but we appreciate the work that you and Senator Scott and, and others in leadership are doing. But it's, it's like, like Ronald Reagan used to say, there they go again. <laughs> it's just the same thing every time. When we go learn, it brings to mind the, the song, you might remember it, it came out in the 70s by the Who, says, well, what, what are you going to do? He said, go get down on my knees and pray. We won't get fooled again. Well, I hope we don't get fooled again this time. I hope we can fight this because this poses a serious threat to not only to the country, but in South Carolina where we have survived the onslaught of bad ideas and misdirection out of Washington. We have, we have survived and are thriving, and this is going to be a tough Tough battle. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, uh, 
Thank you, Governor. Last time we were here, we were talking about H.R. 1, which was a federal government attempt to take over state elections. Every time I turn around, our liberal friends are trying to grab more power, increase more taxes, expand the role of the federal government in every phase of our life, from taking over elections now to basically increasing the IRS so that it is literally an army, $45 billion in new energy taxes on energy production in America, in America at a time we were having extraordinarily high gas prices. So I appreciate you taking a stand, and I would just urge South Carolinians to check this bill out and ask those running for office, where do you stand? Joe Cunningham, where do you stand? Are you for the IRS Army? If you are, say so. If you're against it, say so. Are you for a new gas tax? If you are, say so. If not, say I'm not. So every Republican governor voted no. Every type of Republican voted no because we saw the damage being done. We've lived through this in 2021 with the American Rescue Plan, which became the American Recession Plan. And this is not an inflation reduction plan. It is grow the government plan. And I'm hoping that uh, South Carolinians are paying attention to what we're doing in Washington because it does affect us here at home. And I can promise you this will affect South Carolina's ability to maintain a strong economy. And I hope people running for office in the state will take a stand one way or the other. To take a pass on this is not fair. So I hope Joe Cunningham and others running for office on the Democratic side will speak up one way or the other. Question. Senior correspondent, Sean Hedcox. So is there anything in this plan that you would support? For example, the ability for the federal government to negotiate on Medicare Part D is one thing that's supposed to be saving a lot of money in the state. Well, uh, it's price fixing. There's 10 drugs that Medicare is going to be limited in terms of what they can charge for Medicare. Well, guess what? Uh, those of us not on Medicare are going to be paying higher prices all the drugs that led to COVID virtually that worked came from the United States. Yeah, I'm sure there's something in this bill I could agree to. I have voted with my Democratic colleagues on a bipartisan infrastructure plan. I voted on a, a plan to help the issue of uh, people, unstable people with guns. I voted for the CHIPS Act. It's very expensive, but I felt like we needed to produce chips in America that go into cars and refrigerators and F-35s. It's not like I'm unable to work with my colleagues on the other side, but like every other Republican, this was a bridge too far. This was too much. This was done on a party line vote at a time when many of us would be willing to find common ground. Why did they do this? Because they could. I am begging the people of this country in November, fire this crowd before it's too late. They deserve to be fired. They don't know what they're doing on the economy. In March 2021, they promised us, if you pass the American Rescue Plan, as Senator Schumer said, the economy could double. Vice President Harris said, help is on the way. We went from 2.6% inflation to 9% because they flooded the zone with federal money and federal tax increases, and it created the nightmare we have today. You know, if you're a football team, you need to have more than one play. Tax and spend is the only play they got in their entire playbook. So I'm betting and hoping and praying that when the word gets out about this inflationary bill, that it doesn't reduce inflation, it adds, adds prices in the energy sector, it's going to de-incentivize investment at a time we need more of it, it's gonna create an army of IRS agents that are gonna make it more difficult for small businesses and people to, to manage their lives in this country. Who do you think this army is gonna come after? i tell you who they're going to come after. They're going to come after working Americans. And this is ridiculous. This shows you their priorities. In the democratic world, we're short of IRS agents. In my world, we're short of cops. We're short of Border Patrol agents. We're short of people in the military. So, yeah, there are things in this bill maybe I could support, but the bill wasn't written that way. It wasn't written to get my support. It was written to run over me. And I'm hoping somebody in the House on the Democratic side will see this differently. Senator Graham, what's the Republican plan for reducing inflation? The 
public plan for reducing inflation is stop spending in Washington, increase incentives in the private sector to grow. So what happened here? The last thing you want to do in terms of domestic oil production is throw a wet blanket over it. Why do we want to be, you know, I believe climate change is real, but there's no reason to destroy our economy. So our plan is not to increase taxes on energy production in America. Our plan would be to make it easier to extract fossil fuels that we own here to be less dependent on foreign oil, buying oil from people who hate our guts. Our plan would be to keep the tax cuts that we had in 2017 in place, not to do away with expensing. Expensing allows people to grow their business. It really did work. Our plan is to put a halt on government spending and taxes, and our plan is not to double the size of the IRS. What we did in 2017 worked. We had the strongest economy in my lifetime. Every element of America was doing well. African-American, Hispanic families were receiving uh, benefits from the growing economy as, as much as any time in American history, and along comes COVID. And you know what? We came out of COVID in South Carolina, thanks to our governor, and now this bill is going to take us backwards. We're 90 days before an election. The FBI sent agents to the home of a former president, the leading contender to be the nominee for 2024, and I want to know why. I said two things. Nobody's above the law, but the law needs to be above politics. So if you're a Republican conservative and you hear the FBI is going after Trump again, it sounds alarm bells. This is the same organization that obtained warrants against Carter Page in the Russian investigation that were so flawed the court rebuked the Department of Justice. This is the same FBI that had agents in charge of investigations of Trump that ignored every exculpatory matter and assumed the worst. The question is, was this necessary? Did they work with the Trump family and organization in a fashion to avoid having to do the raid. I don't know, but here's what I do know. I know doing this 90 days before an election reeks of politics. I know this is a dangerous precedent to set. Uh, and at the end of the day, there's a tremendous burden on the Department of Justice, in my view, to explain their actions, and I hope they will. I talked to the President just about an hour ago with Henry. The one thing I can tell you is that I believe he was gonna run before, I'm stronger in my belief now. Every Republican I've talked to, my phone has been lit up. What the hell are these people doing? Can you imagine if this, the roles were reversed here? This happened in the Trump world against a prominent Democrat. So the bottom line here is there's a lot of accountability to be had in the past. The person who altered the warrant application, the lawyer received a one year probationary sentence is back to practicing law. So yeah, I'm very worried that the politics of the past may have risen their head again, but time will tell. Senator Graham, when is the appropriate time to do some type of action like this? Director Comey on, in October 2016 released a statement about investigating more in the Trump emails. So when's the appropriate Well, I, I would say that you don't do things before election unless you have to. And I want to know what, you know what led to this. I think every Republican believes that the FBI, when it comes to Trump and other organizations, have lost their mind. That the FBI protects us against child pornography, against terrorism, against crime. My problem is not with the FBI writ large, but I have lived through this. I have seen the Mueller investigation and their work product, and what I saw was a system trying to get somebody no matter what the evidence told them. I can promise you every stop sign that was there was ran in the Mueller investigation and Crossfire Hurricane, that the FBI analyst in charge of collecting information to prepare the warrant application is also in charge of the Hunter Biden investigation. So yeah, I'm concerned, I'm worried, and I think we need answers in an appropriate fashion. Senator Graham, yeah. clarify, when you said you spoke with the President, you mean President Trump, right? Uh, yeah, it wasn't Biden, it was Trump. <laughs> Senator Graham, as a plant gas prices, oil companies have seen a record profit this year. What's your response to 
Well, nobody reimbursed them when uh, gas prices were down to uh, when it cost, when a barrel of oil was negative. I believe in the market. I believe that this is a commodity that when we were shut down during COVID, guess what? Gas prices went down because nobody could get out of their house. So the bottom line here is this is an attempt by liberal Democrats to restrict domestic oil production at a time we need more of it. Their solution is to go after business. My solution is to incentivize business. To the American oil companies out there, do your job. I am glad you're able to find oil and gas that we own so we can use it here and not buy it from people who hate our guts. So this idea of price fixing and taxing people based on a commodity changing one way or the other will not help us. If you are tired of paying high gas prices, you should be opposed to this bill because it creates a new gas, new gas tax. If you're tired of the federal government restricting the ability of the U.S. economy to grow, you should be against this bill. And you should be for somebody like Henry McMaster that can show you how to grow an economy. Let me go back to a minute about the Department of Justice. <clears throat> Some of y'all will, will remember that I was U.S. Attorney under President Reagan. That's when Attorney General William S uh, French Smith was there and also Ed Meese. And then uh, later as Attorney General, I had the opportunity to work with the FBI on many, many occasions, uh, particularly as U.S. Attorney. And I was on the, attorney, the uh, attorney General's Advisory Committee of U.S. Attorneys and got to spend a lot of time at the Department of Justice back then. And uh, after those experiences, I had and still do have enormous, ex uh, enormous confidence and respect for the FBI as an institution. But I have got to say the last few years, I'm looking for a, a reason to have confidence in the leadership of the FBI today. I have been stunned at the excesses of the leadership of the FBI. I have been stunned and shocked at the things that Senator Graham just mentioned done by the FBI, actually fabricating evidence, fabricating information in order to achieve a political end. Uh, I think we're in, we're in dangerous, uh, dangerous territory. And when I, I think back about the uh, Attorney General of the United States instructing the FBI to go to school board meetings under the guise of seeking domestic terrorists, I want you to think about that for just a minute. Our Attorney General of the United States did that. School board meetings. Now, something is bad wrong when the leadership of the FBI is engaging in these kind of fraudulent, misdirected, illegal, and political, clearly political, operations. Uh, don't know, I have to check it out. <laughs> so I'll get back with you about that. I've, you know, I, I believe elections matter. I've voted for many of the uh, Biden nominees, even though I wouldn't have chosen them myself. And uh, I'll see, some of them have been kind of out there, but elections do matter. So that's what I guess I'm saying. We're 90 days before a major election and this seems to be unnerving, dangerous, ill-advised, and the country's divided enough, so I think we need some answers. Two more questions and comments. And Senator Graham, just to follow up on that, that kind of rhetoric that we're hearing, a lot of folks on social media right now are, are talking about civil war, precursor to a civil war. Uh, what, what are your, what's your message to those people, especially after what we saw happen January 6th? Well, number one, uh, Violence is not the answer to any political problem. We have institutions in this country, and there's a lack of faith in many of them for a reason. But here's what I would say. I would say that we need to go to the ballot box to take out our frustrations, that Republicans like myself, you know, I, I supported the Mueller investigation. I actually introduced legislation with Democrats to make sure that special counsels couldn't be fired without cause because I do believe in the idea of uh, oversight and transparency and everybody's, nobody's above the law. 
Well, what did I learn from the Mueller investigation? The FBI, when it comes to Trump, has lost their way. This unending desire to destroy Trump and his family is frustrating. President Trump and I got started off kind of tough, but I admired him as president. I don't agree with everything he says or does. I've talked to him twice today, and I told him that, you know, there's legal systems in this country. Avail yourself of it, and time will tell as to what's going on. But to those who feel like you need to, to violently react, the answer is don't. What you need to do is you need to make sure you show up and vote to stop some of this madness. And we do have a legal system in this country, and we'll get to the bottom of it like did with Mueller investigation. And here's what I think. I think President Trump is determined now more than ever to straighten this country out. Henry and I both talked to him. I've talked to him twice today. Uh, he believes the country is going in the wrong direction. Everything he's done has been undercut. Uh, the border was secure. Now it's just a complete, absolute nightmare. The economy uh, is in tatters. Uh, you had a withdrawal from Afghanistan that's just become a nightmare. You got Russia invading Ukraine, trying to rewrite the map of Europe. You got Taiwan being encircled by the Chinese. Other than that, things are going great. I think this president, President Trump, is going to push through this. I think the Department of Justice uh, has a heavy burden here. So to those those Americans who are, are worried, stay focused, reject violence. Senator Graham, last question. Senator Graham, tomorrow there's a hearing on the Georgia subpoena. Yeah. My question to you is, do you regret making the calls to Secretary, the two calls to Secretary Raffensperger, and who asked you to make those calls to Secretary Raffensperger? Number one, read my brief, and we will take this as far as we need to take it. I was chairman of the Judiciary Committee. I had to vote on certifying an election. This is ridiculous. This weaponization of the law needs to stop. So I will use the courts and we'll go as far as we need to go and do whatever needs to be done to make sure that people like me can do their job without fear of some county prosecutor coming after you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.